Are you too by any chance annoyed about the high temperatures and power consumption of Intel's 13th gen Raptor Lake CPUs? No problem, there's an easy way to quickly and effectively make these CPUs run cooler and more efficient. While these Intel CPUs don't allow for as great optimizations as seen on AMD's Neo Ryzen series, temperatures nonetheless successfully can be reduced by 20 to 35 degrees Celsius. Even the power consumption can be lowered by a whopping 70 to 100 watts without any issues, and that's without negatively affecting the performance. As is the case with AMD, there are a few different ways we could achieve our goals. Generally speaking, with Raptor Lake by Intel, we can make use of one of the classic methods, and that is undervolting. However, power limits play just as much of a big role here. Surely a lot of you will already be familiar with the following optimizations, but just in case there's someone out there that isn't yet, this video could allow for a cooler as well as more power efficient system. Also make sure to watch until the end, because I'll be discussing how to properly check whether or not your system is running stable after having applied all these adjustments. After all, we don't want to deal with any instability down the line, such as crashing and the like. Of course, right off the bat, it needs to be pointed out that we could explore this topic more thoroughly, but my goal is to offer the more inexperienced users a rather simple optimization as and not to discourage those users from touching any settings. It sure would have been nice if the manufacturer Intel had allowed for lower temperatures and power draw right out of the box, but same can unfortunately be said about the competitor AMD. Feel free to watch my video, the counterpart to this one, dealing with the same topic. Alright, this ate away quite a bit of my free time, since I've gone through optimizations with not only the Intel Core i9-13900K, but i7-13700K and i5-13600K too. Other models by Intel will, needless to say, work with this method of optimization as well. Step 1 would be to boot into the BIOS. I'm dealing with ASRock motherboards I've used for all my tests. Depending on the model and board manufacturer, the user interface will differ slightly. Mostly you'll first have to find OC slash overclocking settings. Among those you'll have to be on the lookout for power limits. Now depending on the motherboard model and make, you could come across the board automatically specifying a default power limit that more often than not exceeds what is officially stated according to the Intel specification. Often motherboards allow the CPU to draw more power than actually required, which leads to higher temperatures and inefficiency, but in turn could potentially minimally allow for better performance. I recommend sticking to the official Intel spec here. All those respective CPUs do come with slightly different power limits though, which I'll now put on this screen for you. Intel, however, specifies two power limits, namely PL1 and PL2. I'd solely focus on PL2 here, the higher limit out of the two. PL1, that's supposed to be the long-term or long-duration limit, I am completely ignoring. I'm basically leaving it at its auto setting or force PL1 to be identical to PL2. This may sound complicated, but that prevents the clock speeds from dropping down to base levels under extended periods of loads. Therefore, we don't experience any performance drops. In the case of a 13700K, I'm now going for its intended official power limit of 253 watts and enter that value into the corresponding field. Furthermore, my advice to you is to check your Intel CPU's max temperature. Generally, we are speaking of a maximum of 100 degrees Celsius for such Intel CPUs. But with certain motherboards, we are dealing with the following. The CPU at auto settings is being operated without any temperature limitation in place. If there's overheating, things can go south real quick. So if you happen to overlook or simply don't check temperatures at all, you could end up exceeding 100 degrees in no time. In the case of my 13900K, in combination with my ASRock Z790 motherboard, within just a few seconds, I saw the temperature skyrocketing to 117 degrees before I quickly aborted all the tests. 
Surely that's going to depend on the motherboard and model, but just to avoid any miseries, please just set a manual fixed temperature limit for your CPU and be safe. Within the BIOS, simply set 100 degrees. Very well, the CPU with these settings should already be running cooler and more power efficient, if you're lucky. We can go for further optimization by diving into the realm of undervolting. For that, you'll have to locate some kind of OC slash overclocking menu within the BIOS and then spot voltage settings of some sort. Following that, keep an eye out for CPU voltage or CPU core voltage. It would be more convenient to work with an offset. A lot of boards offer that option, but not all manufacturers allow us to go for huge jumps here. With my ASRock board, I'm only allowed to go down to negative 100 millivolts which is why we'll have to go for the fixed or override mode. Now we are manually entering a value in the unit volts. This is where you'll have to be really careful. If you enter a voltage that's too low, your system will not boot successfully and you'll have to clear and reset the CMOS. If you go crazy and apply a voltage that's too high, in a worst case scenario, you will instantly fry your CPU. So to get a good baseline of our CPU voltage, I'm advising you to read out and check your current voltage at full load while having an active Cinebench run, for instance. Write down the voltage. Hardware Info 64 will certainly help here. On average for my 13700K, we are reading out roughly 1.38 volts. So just to be on the safe side, I personally would try to achieve and match that CPU voltage within the BIOS. I am setting a higher load line calibration setting though, in order not to deal with any annoying voltage drops that could make troubleshooting harder for us. Then we check whether we read out the same voltage or a different one. In most cases, there's a discrepancy. It's either the CPU running at a lower or higher voltage at this point compared to our first readout. Your very first objective here should be to match your manual voltage input as closely as possible to the stock ones like in your first readout. If you have gotten to that point, you can slowly and steadily move your way down with the voltage. The objective is to require less voltage for the same clock speeds, but you will have to make sure you're still stable. From my experience, manually entered voltages within the ASRock BIOS highly differ from the real ones. So do not be shocked about the fact I quote unquote lowered my voltage down to 1.46 volts. And the load line calibration should not be forgotten too, at least when dealing with an ASRock motherboard. As a matter of fact, with that seemingly and shockingly high voltage entry, the CPU actually runs at a lower vCore than at stock settings. That's exactly what we aimed for. At the end of the day, you'll just have to play around a little bit as to how low exactly you can push the voltage before you start experiencing crashes. It's advised to move your way down in increments of 0.05 to 0.1 volts, followed by benchmarks and stress tests. If all appears to run stable, lower the voltage further and repeat. Depending on the CPU and how lucky you end up being, you will either achieve better or worse results. For instance, while I managed to achieve great successes with both the 13700K and 13600K models, results with the flagship 13900K were rather lackluster. The Core i9 CPU I sadly didn't manage to successfully undervolt, therefore cannot go for the maximum optimization potential. It seems I've gotten unlucky, a fact I simply need to accept. Undervolting in itself does not affect clock speeds. A specified power limit on the other hand does. While a 13600K and even 13700K after optimizations did not drop at all in terms of clock speeds, with the 13900K there is a measurable drop. Luckily it doesn't seem to have too big of an impact on performance. The final results after successful optimizations definitely are something. The temperature of the 13900K, despite being unable to undervolt it, got reduced from 100 degrees down to 88. The greatest jump can be witnessed on the 13600K, that's 89 down to 66 degrees Celsius. As far as power draw is concerned, there's obviously a lot that can be done about it. You easily shave off 70 to 100 watts. While gaming, it's not that much, but nonetheless, we do save a bit of electricity there. 
The great thing about these optimizations is, at least if that's what you aim for, there hardly are any performance losses to witness. And if there are ones, they are usually negligible. Both in productivity as well as in gaming scenarios, we are practically seeing the same performance as at stock or auto settings as specified by our motherboard. Which is why I can and will recommend every Intel Raptor Lake CPU owner out there to go through those optimizations. It might appear complicated at first, but the principles are really simple. So how can you be sure your CPU is running 100% stable? 30 minutes of Cinebench runs won't do the trick. Even if the CPU appears to run stable, down the line at some point you could experience a freeze or crash. That's why I recommend firing up Prime95 and running a stress test. Choose the option small FFTs so the CPU really is being pushed to its limits. Such a hardcore test usually will make CPUs crash within 2-5 to five minutes if there's any instability. You will know when you run into instability once you see a freeze, blue screen of death or a Prime95 worker simply stopping to work. If you make it to 15 minutes without any crashes and the like, chances are high your CPU, with the adjustments you've made to it, is stable. If you want to be sure, you could let that stress test run for 1 or 2 hours. 15 to 30 minutes usually are enough though, coming from my experience. Of course it's likely you'll have to go for several attempts, depending on how lucky you get at undervolting. At this point, I wish you the best of optimization results, as well as joy with your cooler and more power efficient system. Thanks a lot for watching and until the next one.